on Saturday night, I was a little bit disappointed to see myself being 11th. You know, I was like, well, of course, obviously 10-6 is a big number. So I thought, hmm, maybe you play only a few holes if it goes bad for us. But then, when I was laying in bed, I think it was 11, I, th I think 11.27. I think I could remember the time on the, on the clock next to the bed. I could barely sleep and then I thought, maybe that is what, what Graham McDowell thought too, two years ago. Maybe it comes down to you or Francesco tomorrow. And then I was starting getting a little nervous because it can happen. And I think I slept only for an hour and a half or two hours. And then I was arriving at the golf course the next day and I thought, okay, have a look at the leaderboard. And then you see blue, 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 blue. I thought, oh, 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 maybe. And then, yeah, of course I was nervous. The atmosphere is so, it's like a little umbrella over everyone. You do notice it somewhere, but you're so busy with what you have to do now. I think deep inside, you really enjoy the atmosphere of the people, of the fans. The screaming. Then you see your team colleagues. The captains, they are, they are so nervous. Everything is quick. I think you don't notice that much in that moment. It's actually a pity that you don't notice all of those little things while you play. Yeah! Well, obviously I was very, very pumped. I was never in a situation like this before. I just want to hit the next shot. I was going very fast. And obviously I, I recognized the, no, I'm not sure if I did really recognize who was there. I know that I did a high five with someone, but I can't remember, it was a little painful. It was quite a big one, I was so pumped. Um, but to be honest with you, I cannot remember who was standing there. I have no idea, I, I don't know. What just happened on 17, obviously to go one up on 18 is big. I said to my caddy, I said to Craig that I need 10 extra seconds here. I need to calm down. I need to really calm down because I was very emotional and was very... I felt like I can hit the shot, I can hit the drive 400 yards. And then I looked at the at the wind and everything, and then I was pretty much back in my in my little bubble. Honestly, I cannot remember what Craig told me. I can remember where I was aiming at. I was aiming at at a like the the cut of the fairway. Obviously, they cut it into the green and, and with the, um, or let's say from the green to the tee box, from the tee box to the green, they're always a little lighter color, darker. And I was aiming at one stripe on the left side of the fairway. I can remember that, but I had no idea what Craig was talking about. I mean, I, I cannot remember. I don't even know if it was good or bad, but <laughs> I just, I just don't know. I was still very, it's not nervous, it's just a, huge excitement 
huge that I never had before. So that's why I needed a few extra seconds, I think. And I know I was cutting the ball. Yeah, then I overcut it a little bit and it went in the bunker. For me, it was just important to see where's my ball. I'm not a big lover from fairway bunkers. I was just hoping it's a flat lie. And it's obviously you just want to go, you want to see. Where, where am I? Okay, I have a good yardage. Do I have a good yardage? Where can I place it? So you want to see the next shot. Now I didn't care what really he did, because I know he will place it somewhere. And I was one up and I thought, you know, the pressure's up to him. He needs to make a three. Because I, I mean, I'm not screwing up here. It's not going to happen that I make five here. Ready, bro. I think I, I said something about the atmosphere. That's the way Graham must have felt in Wales two years ago. I think something like I think we talked about Celtic Manor a little bit, but you have to ask him. I mean, I, he could probably remember better than me. Yeah, I can remember that we had obviously we had similar yardages, uh, Steve Stricker and me. But I think it was still my shot. Um, I think it was my shot. Eh? Did I hit first? I think I hit first. I said to Craig, "Is this eight, eight or seven nine? And He said, "I mean, perfect, eight nine." Yeah, I'm just saying. But the only thing I was yeah. thinking about hitting a, a clear shot, rather a little thin than fat. I was very surprised about the shot because I know it was right to left wind, which is actually quite nice for me because I cut it usually. So I could be fairly aggressive over the shot, but I wanted to leave it short, short right. But then a high draw. And I, I mean, I struggle with draws. So I was surprised. Where is that coming from? But the bounce, I tell you, the bounce from the the second shot when it land next to the green. I, mean, I have no idea how that can bounce on the green. It came in high from right to left and I think it hit a right to left slope, but it went right. That is how it at least looked from the bunker. I have no idea how it went on the green. After I hit my shot, I didn't realize that Stricker said to hit. I want to go and make the putt. So I started walking and Craig, he came up to me and said, you know, stay calm. I mean, you know, that's all you could do. He needs, he needs to deliver. You put it on the green, we're fine. I said, yeah, but I want to make the putt. So I need to wait actually. Then I walked to the green and I mean, I, you can't, don't ask me where Craig was, don't ask me what other people, I have no idea. I just walked towards the green. I saw that he's a very difficult putt. So I thought two putts is enough. It's up to me now. I was looking at my putt a little bit. I was looking at the people around. You can't focus on a putt for two or three minutes. I mean, you see every piece of grass all of a sudden. It's distracting. So I was just walking around and looking and I saw my, my brother behind the green. I can remember that. So that was very nice. And then I saw it on the screen, um, the score and everything. It's just, it was a very enjoyable moment because I could really realize what is happening here now. It was not like that you're overwhelmed by the feelings and by the emotions. It was beautiful. 
because I was really aware of what I have to do now. And then when, when Stricker hit his putt, there was... Obviously, you were a little shocked where it went. And that obviously relaxes you a little, little bit, knowing that you have two putts. And then you see it on the screen. Timer one up to remain the Ryder Cup. I mean, I would love to take a picture of that in the moment. Terrible. It was terrible. My alignment, the first time I aligned, it was way too far right. And my routine was different. Because I put the putter down, I looked look to the hole, I opened my feet, looked up again. Usually I would putt now. But then I knew ooh, I aimed too far right. And I thought, well, maybe I can pull a little bit, then it's okay. But then I, I aimed a little bit further left again. But I knew it's still not enough. But in that moment, you know, you don't really think to back off or anything. I just thought, okay. It happens sometimes on the golf course too, when you play normal holes, that you aim maybe a tiny bit too far right or left, but you just do it. It's not right, but you do it. I think through the pull, I get more roll. And then it was yeah, a little bit further away than I wanted. Now, when you talk about it, why do you do it? Well, why don't you back off and then go in it again? Because it's very important. But in that moment, everything is within two or three seconds. You know, you don't think that much. You just want to, you want to make the putt. I wanted to see it going in the hole. That was my biggest goal. I want to have the ultimate, the ultimate feeling. That would have been, I mean, how cool is that? I knew I had a putt to win. And that's enough. <laughs> Knowing it's all up to me, it's not up to him. It's all up to me if we win now, if I win my match or not. And that's all I want. Six, seven feet is not ideal. I would have rather have two. <laughs> but when he made it, you know, it was expected. It never crossed my mind that I will miss it. I was just focused on, on one little piece in the hole. Pretty clear putt, fairly simple. You can make a confidence stroke and goes in. There's no chance that I will miss. Uphill, right to left, inside the hole. I've done it a hundred times. Thousand probably. When I was over there and made my putting stroke, I thought, man, damn, it's that loud here. I can remember that. And I put the putter down, and then I hit it. But it was just that the last two feet when the ball rolled towards the hole, obviously, you know it's, it's right in the middle. It's very tough, I mean, it's tough to describe. It's just happiness, a lot of happiness that I n never felt on a golf course. And you could see the reaction. Just not me, really, but that's how important it was. Could have been anyone. It could have been you. If you would have stood there, I would have. I would have jumped on you. It would have been fine. But Sergio, he was. The, well, I'm not sure if he was the lucky one because I probably hurt his back. It was just a lot of good feelings in that moment. And when I was in the locker room after the putt, I was... I was so tired, so done, physically. 
but also emotionally you're just going crazy. They were a proper team. Everything was set up that they will win. It looked like it that they will win. Friday, Saturday, they played fantastic. We had to do everything we could just to stay in there. You need to think about that as well. It was not only about us, but we did, we did such a great job on Sunday. Yes, we did, but it was tough for them on Sunday. How can you not like Steve Stricker? If I beat someone that I don't like, fine, I don't care. In that moment, obviously, it's more you want to win. But to beat Stricker in that moment, the way he is as a person, the way he treats us players, treats the fans, uh, you, don't, you don't want to see that. home in Düsseldorf and I and I got the DVD I didn't want to watch the whole Ryder Cup I just watched the last two hours and then obviously I saw Sergio's match Justin Rose's match and then I watched what the last two three holes that I played and believe it or not then but I was more nervous watching it than playing I mean it's crazy I know, I know how it will end. I know that we will win. But I was nervous watching it two weeks later. I mean, there's something wrong with that. See Ola Saba when, when he took his earplug out when I missed it by six feet and he was, I was just looking up. Was like, so it's funny. And if he if if he says he enjoyed every moment of it, that's not true. I'm sure he didn't enjoy that moment. Maybe he did enjoy it a little bit, but not not that much. A lot of people just break it down to, to the players, what, what the players go through the three days or the whole week and the captain. It's a relief in many ways for all the people who worked for two years on that project who are involved in the Ryder Cup. The girls who measure our clothes and everybody who's involved, you guys, the media, they're there, they travel back and forth to see the golf course, all those things, and you just prepare. You just want to, everybody wants you to win. And it's so important to everyone, especially for us in Europe. You know, and that's a huge relief and satisfaction that you could deliver what people expected you to do. Expectation is one thing, but then to deliver is very difficult sometimes. But that's why Ola Saba wanted me on the team. That's why my friends and family, they believed in me that I can, that I can do that. And then you deliver. It's a lot of satisfaction, a lot. <laughs>